Hello. Good evening, everyone. Let me go ahead and share it in a couple of groups. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Hi, Robin. Hi, Kendall. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Greg. How are you? Let me. Oops. Okay, let me get my dad invited. All right. Okay. All right, so where are we? Day 17 of the 30 day boss up challenge. Fucking right on through. I'd like to welcome new viewers who might stop by and eventually see this video. Thank you for tuning in. This is the Business Builder Basics group. Hi, mom. Hey. This is the Business Builder Basics group. And this is day 17 of the 30 day boss up challenge where I encourage you to boss up whether it's a side hustle or full blown corporation, just basically trying to find a way to financial freedom. Hey, Derek. And so today, um, before I get started with today's topic, you know, I'm going to go through the routine, please like the video, share the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel which is Business Builder Basics, join the Facebook group, and that will be great. We actually got some extra subscribers since last night, and I think maybe an extra member or two in the uh, Facebook group. So that's great, and I'm very appreciative of those that are supporting me. Um, I also want to do my acknowledgments, and that will be Marcia Baker of Mark of Success. That's her company. She does website development and uh, IT. She may have even expanded to provide more services. I think she does like trainings and different things on various um, IT issues. Like she'll travel and train companies and their employees on different things. And so that's Mark of Success. I'll go back after the video is over and put in, I will at her, and that way you can see her information and check her out. All right, now the goal check-in. Last night, we talked about um, converting your potential energy into kinetic energy, which is, you know, using knowledge as power and actually doing something with the knowledge. So the goal for last night was to consider something that you were actually going to do within the next seven days where you actually move. You actually physically do something towards your business, not just contemplating, pondering, strategizing in your mind. There's going to be some action within the next seven days. You determine what that action is going to be, and then I'll be following up with you. Okay. So the topic for today is basically uh, get like the cats on Wall Street, okay? I went to a seminar today and I took plenty of notes and I decided may as well make that the topic tonight, share with you what I learned today. And although I won't be, tonight will not be about teaching you how to day trade, tonight's gonna be about talking about how and why day trading could be a good option for you to either make extra income or even to tr day trade for a living okay so i think it just depends on what you're looking to get out of it and how analytical you can be uh, i don't think it's for everyone but i do want to explain some things about it okay and i also want to you all know that i always seem like i'm talking trash about 401ks and thrift savings plans well, there's a reason they're not like terrible 
but what I what I heard what I heard today reinforced what I already was kind of feeling about those long term kind of uh, mutual funds and retirement type of investments. So I'm going to share with you what I found out today. Okay, let's see. So the first thing they started out was saying that 78% of people in the United States live paycheck to paycheck. Very believable. I think we discovered that during the furlough. So basically you have people are accustomed to the average person, the layman's person is accustomed to a buy and hold strategy. When you get yourself a stockbroker, apparently this is what they're encouraging you to do is to put your money in a mutual fund or it's this strategy of put your money in now and wait way later, years and years and years down the line before you see a return on your investment. Okay. Um, so it's like buy an asset today and hope that it will continue to grow. But they're finding that this is not good. It's not working for a lot of people. And um, people are actually losing money. Or the only reason their portfolio is growing is because of what they continue to put into it. And a lot of people will do it because their jobs have like a matching program. They did say that the only time they feel it was good to put money into those kind of mutual funds is if you have a job that's matching it. You only put up to what your job matches because that money that they're putting in is like free money. But beyond that, you're not going to have a lot of your money tied up in these long-term kind of things. That's what they're saying. If you wanna take a chance and try to actually make your money work harder for you, you're gonna have to learn the skill of day trading. All right. You can, I believe you can also request that your stockbroker or whatever the person, your financial advisor, whoever is, is handling these kind of things for you, I think you can request that they actually day trade on your behalf. I'm not exactly sure about that, but the, the purpose of today's seminar was they're trying to encourage people to X out the middleman, to stop using the, the brokers, to stop um, relying on the 401ks and the thrift savings plan. They want you to um, understand that you might be able to manage your own portfolio. You may be able to day trade yourself and make decent money, depending on if you did good with it. There is always a risk of losing money, but there's also the, the potential for gain. And I think this could be a good option for people who have some um, disposable income that they don't mind actually losing. For instance, the kind of money that you may spend on vacationing or um, luxury items or things like that. I think that a lot of people have more money than what they really, what they really even understand because they spend so much they think they don't have money to spare but if they were to change their household budget as i've been encouraging you all to do you would actually have money to spare to give this a shot but before you start doing it you have to learn how to do it and so this place was really trying to sell their class and that's not really by the time it was over I already knew that I probably was not going to be taking their class or going to their academy. I'm very leery about the for-profit institutions that charge you for your education on a for-profit basis. I kind of prefer like universities or institutions that are nonprofit and the student is treated as a scholar and not a consumer. But I feel like what they shared today was good information and it kind of let me know what areas I need to look into to get more information about. I can try to see if there are other places that might actually teach, but what I'm thinking is that it may be sufficient if you're good at self-learning or self-teaching to you know read books, watch YouTube videos, and just take a stab at it. 
basically, like to get going with a Robin Hood account or an Acorn account or something like that. So um, let me go over the notes that I have here. They gave an example. If you make a, like, let's say you would have made a one-time investment of half a million dollars in the year 2000. And the average annual return was 3%. Well, in between 2000 and 2002, there was a market crash. And by the end of 2002, that half a million is now worth 299000 So you went down, okay, in two years. And then it showed that to get back to where you started, which was half a million and the market that we actually had because they're doing this retrospectively they're now looking back on it and telling you this is what happened it took five more years to get back to where the person started who made that initial half a million dollar investment so it basically for so the first two years it went down and it took another five years to get back to your initial investment. That's seven years to break even. Okay. So already that doesn't sound good to the average person that does math and understand that does not sound good at all. Seven years to break even feels like you're running on a hamster wheel. They claim that what happened between the year 2000 and 2002, they said that was supposedly an anomaly, something that generally doesn't happen. They've not seen that before, um, but it happened again in 2008. Okay, so you had in 2000, the market crashed and people lost, hey Terry, and people lost about 50% of their assets. And then in 2008, it crashed again, and it was people lost about 57%. So what they're trying to say is this will happen again. But through day trading, they're saying you can still learn to be profitable even in down market conditions. Because what they say is that the people on Wall Street, these institutions, um, financial institutions, the banks like Goldman Sachs, they showed us like the fact that they never really lose as far as their net over the course of 365 days. This is public information on their website. They don't lose very much, even when the market is down. Why is that? It's because these are the companies that are convincing everybody, the common average person, they're convincing these people to put, to buy into these mutual funds and telling them, yeah, just put, put plenty of money in that and just wait. Just wait 15, 20 years. Let that be your retirement. This is what they tell people. And they say that that's the best strategy. But yet they turn around and they day trade, right? So they're basically not practicing what they preach. And that's because they need people's money to go and take these risks and that's how they make a lot of money and these companies have been around for long they're not going anywhere basically and so what this place today was trying to say is that in order to be successful with day trading you have to stop trading and stop investing like the average investor you have to actually go ahead and Take the time to acquire the knowledge so that you yourself can day trade and you can take the approach that the institutions take. There's no reason why you can't apply the methods they're using, but you're doing it on a smaller level with just a smaller amount of money, obviously. So it made sense what they were saying. It made sense. Um, the big banks, the big money managers, they they will tell you to do things that they know they're not going to do. So we need to learn how to do what they do so that we can get the same results. The problem is if there's so much money to be made or this is such a good thing, why aren't more people doing it? Well, there are a lot of reasons. And I know in my 
community in particular, there's a lot of fear around the stock market. There's a lot of fear around giving your money to somebody and thinking that they're going to um, handle their fiduciary responsibility and work in your best interest. However, there are really no, what they said today, and I didn't fact check this yet, but they said that these stockbrokers in, in these institutions, they really don't have any fiduciary laws that really, they don't have to act in your best interest, apparently. There are things that they can do that are in their own best interest for instance, if you, they might have a deal with a company, let's say Johnson & Johnson, like the baby powder company, Johnson & Johnson, they might have a deal with them where they're going to encourage all of their customers who come to them to manage their accounts. They're going to put money into Johnson & Johnson. They're actually allowed to do that, apparently. And it doesn't matter if Johnson & Johnson is actually doing well or not. It's just that that's the, the kickback they get for putting your money into a company they have a deal with. So you have those kind of things going on, which causes people to like not trust stockbrokers or the stock market. But the thing is, what you have to realize is that if you, part of why I've not put money into the stock market up to this point is because I didn't have an understanding of it. I didn't know what it was. I had no idea what the little numbers and letters and acronyms were going across the screen. And you see the movies and you see everybody's running around the floors in New York and looking at the different clocks. I never knew what that meant. So when I don't understand how something works, I don't really like to rely on other people to do things on my behalf without me having any kind of understanding of what it is. I wish I had got it, I wish I had gotten started earlier educating myself on the stock market because maybe you know I could be in a different position right now. But I still feel like it's not too late and what these people are trying to tell you is that learn some of the strategies that the big places use which is day trading and you might actually do well with it. There's a gentleman who is one of my Facebook friends, and occasionally he'll bless us by showing us, he'll like scratch out his balance in black, but he'll show us like his gains and losses sometimes that he experiences day to day. And I remember one stood out in my mind, he was trading penny stocks, and he actually um, made eight about $8,000 in a day, okay? And his, his uh, post said something like, you know, I made 8000 today. I think I'm going to take the rest of the month off. That was attractive to me because I was like, wait a minute, you did what? How did you do that? You know, and so when you know somebody that's really doing it and they're not like an actual stockbroker, they're just someone who happens to be talented, motivated, and intelligent, and they're able to make $8,000 simply by using their brain and paying attention to the market and knowing when to buy and knowing when to sell, made $8,000 in a day. At the same time, he'll post a picture that recently showed he had like a 40% loss and it equated to about maybe $16,000 he lost in one day. So you have to know that there is a downside to it. But if you, the more he, when I inbox him and ask him about, I mean, he, he, it's not like he's been doing it for years and years and years. He's still relatively new at it. And he's already gotten to the level where he can get $8,000 in one day. So if you, when you have those gains, if you use those gains properly, at some point, you don't have to really put more of your money into the account. You can use the money that is making money to make more money. And that way, when you lose the money, it's easier to stomach because it's not like you actually took any more money out of your pocket to put into it. So once you get kind of rolling with it, and if you're not negligent and not too foolish with it, you know, you will suffer some losses, but you can 
you may be able to be successful with it. The, the possibilities are there, and that's what I want you all to know tonight. I'm not guaranteeing any kind of success. In fact, they said out of all the people who attempt to do the day trading, only 5% are really successful with it, meaning I guess they're able to do it full time, or I think he defined success, actually. He was saying that um, they did not lose everything within a year or something like that. That's what constituted success. And 5% is a low number, but for someone like myself, I still feel hopeful because I am the kind of person where I oftentimes do the kind of stuff that the minority of the population does. Run businesses, get a doctorate, go hard at things. So I'm that person who's extra anyway so why couldn't I be a 5% that does well with it? That's how I feel about it. Maybe anything that I put my mind to and focus on, I can make pop. That's what I want to believe about myself. And that's why I'm going to get into this. I'm going to give it a shot. So, but that means 95% of people are not doing well with it. But I think that goes back to what we talked about with Dr. Boyce Watkins, who said that only... 8% of people achieve their goals. So you and then you have the amount of wealthy people, it's like a 3% that's super wealthy and it's less than like 10% that are wealthy. That's not a lot. That's not a lot. So basically it seems like there's always a small minority of people that are doing like extraordinary things or have extraordinary wealth or you know, so but how do you know you're not that person? You know, or how do you know you can't become that person if you change some of your habits, change some of your thinking, and get become more disciplined? How do you know you can't be in that 5% of people that are doing it successfully? And that 5% number is not fixed. It doesn't mean that forever only 5% of day traders will be successful. That's just what it's been on average. But if people start getting into this thing and they stop being afraid and they start applying themselves and they start building up their knowledge and actually applying the knowledge, maybe it can become more like 10 or 15% of people that are doing it are successful. So I really think it's worth looking into. And um, without getting into all the details of what, what's in my notes, because I think I would I would lose everybody with you not having anything in front of you to look at. What I'm really trying to say is that find a way to get educated about day trading. Before you go and spend any money anywhere, you can go to a lot of free seminars that will give you like an introductory level understanding of why you should consider it. And then they're going to, at some point, want you to pay. And they can be quite costly. I've seen them be like $4,000 to get, you know, a class. But for me, that wasn't really that bad because I was preparing to get an MBA in finance and wealth management for this very reason. But I couldn't do that in the doctoral program that I'm in, so I had to choose one. But after seeing what I saw today, I wish that I had actually done the MBA in finance first because I could have been making my money work for me as I'm pursuing my doctorate so but instead of getting a whole degree because you don't really have to do that um, you can go you can look at YouTube videos you can read books and get a general idea if you're able to grasp what they're talking about if you can read a couple of books and look at some videos and have a general understanding of kind of what they're talking about, perhaps if you spend more time studying, you'll be fine with it. If you put a lot of time into it and you feel like you're completely and utterly lost, like if numbers scare you, if charts and graphs scare you, um, this may not be for you, but it's worth a shot. At least watch some YouTube videos and see if you kind of understand how it works. I mean, there is no real pre, there is no way to really predict when exactly you should buy and sell. 
and everybody has different strategies and things that they think works best. So what I believe, instead of going to someone's class who's going to teach me one particular way they think it should be done, I would like to figure out the fundamentals and perhaps use my own critical thinking skills to figure out my strategy. What I gathered from this was that your strategy can, for the people that are successful and who've done really well with it, they kind of develop their own strategy and then they try to package that and sell it to others to say, here, I was successful. This is what I did. Let me try to teach you how I did it. And I don't know if that really works because I really think it's more about the individual who gets that that flow, their their own flow. So you, there are definitely some things you can look out for that people will tell you as strategies. But what I like to do, because I'm not really a follower, I'm an innovator. I want to see myself as being a person who figures out another trend or way of doing it. You know, maybe with the focus on penny stocks, which I think is defined by a stock less than a dollar and fifty cent. I want to say, don't quote me, but you know, come on, a dollar and fifty cent. If if you have a little bit of money to work with, it's almost like playing a video game. A lot of you all are known to spend money in virtual games where you pay for things that don't really exist because it's a game. Just imagine if you put that money into buying penny stocks and trading. The gentleman that I told you about who made the $8,000 in one day, I want to say that that particular day he had been trading penny stocks. So at some point, he bought a bunch of stocks that was less than $1.50 per share. And he was able to grow it, or I'm not sure what his initial investment was, but who can't afford to play around with a dollar fifty stocks and you can get a robin hood account with i think a minimum initial investment of 35 dollars and that is what you all would spend on a cup of coffee from starbucks every day if it's five dollars in a seven day week that's 35 dollars so there are plenty of ways to figure out how to get 35 dollars out of your budget to start playing around with this um, just know that whatever money you put in, please be, don't put your rent money in there. You know, don't put the money for food or your child care tuition money. Just the money that you have that you can afford to lose as if you were going to like the casino. Treat it like that. And some of you all go to the casino, they have much worse odds of, of getting a return on your investment. But yet you say you're scared of the stock market. I'm here to tell you tonight that change the way you think about that because that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Um, the way that we spend money and get no return on our investment, we do it so frequently that we don't even realize that's what we're doing. We're putting money out and not getting a return on our investment. The only return some of us get is the way that the pleasure center of the brain lights up and gets activated when you buy or spend or win when you're gambling, you know, or the way you feel when you buy that new Louis Vuitton bag. That's something happening in your brain, actually, and it's a reward. So that's really the return that you're getting on your investment. But I I want I, I prefer to take those kind of risks in a more calculated way, in a way that could really give me some return like cash money return on my cash money investment. And that's what I encourage you all to do. All right, and so let's see. Let me make sure I hit on the most important parts of today's seminar. Let's see. One thing they said is that Wall Street still makes money whether the market is sideways, up, or down. They're still making money. They're trying to say that in day trading, you can still pull. If you buy and then sell at the right time within a day, you can pull money out even in a declining market overall. 
and this is why they say get like Wall Street because they they never truly lose. They 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 have losses, but when you add up their gains and their losses, they're in the black by the tune of hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions. And that you can see on the Goldman Sachs website. Let's see. So they mentioned the gentleman, Jack Bogle, who also went by the name John. He apparently, he um, died recent, more recently. Um, he was the founder of Vanguard and apparently he was instrumental in exposing the high degree of loss associated with mutual funds. And he, he talked about the rule of 72. And that's basically you take the number 72. Hey, sis. Hey, Grace. And you take the number 72 and you divide it by the rate of return. Okay. So they said, just imagine if Bank of America is giving you 1% return on a savings account, which that's actually not what they give. They give like more like 0 0.00001. But for purposes of easy math, he said, just say 1% returns on your saving account. So it would take, if you put, it would take 72 years for your Bank of America account to double according to the rule of 72. What do you think you're going to be doing 72 years from now? You're going to be taking a dirt nap more than likely. <laughs> so... So doubling in 72 years, who is that really helping? And how much would you even have to put in for that doubling to even look sexy? So the mutual fund and the rule of 72, if you're taking notes, write that down and, and research that. The rule of 72, look up Jack Bogle, B-O-G-L-E, founder of Vanguard. All right. So let's see, they gave another example. If you made initial investment of $10,000 and you let it sit for 50 years, getting a 10% return every year, and 10% is what they're usually selling to people when they talk about your long-term retirement. They're like, yes, the market's going to go up and down, but you can expect overall, on average, about a 10% return, right? This is what they tell people. So you got $10,000 for 50 years, getting a 10% return every year. That would be 1.1, roughly $1.1 $1 million, right? After 50 years at that rate. All mutual funds have maybe at least 2% coming out year after year for the company that's managing that fund your money for you so when you look at the fine print and it says we're going to get our two percent you don't think much about it because two percent to the average person looked at in isolation doesn't sound that bad right but listen to this if the if if they have two percent coming out year after year you actually, and some are as high as like seven to nine percent. You could actually, you actually pay seven hundred thousand dollars to somebody else to make that money for you. So remember, your ten thousand dollar initial investment after fifty years of getting ten percent return every year is one point one million dollars. But because you owe the person managing that account for you at least two percent every year you're actually giving away $700,000 over the course of that 50 years to somebody else to make the money for you, okay? And so um, that doesn't sound good to me. That doesn't sound good at all because, number one, you got to wait 50 years to get a return on your $10,000, Um Right now, at my age, that definitely doesn't sound good. I I don't. I hope that I'll still be in good shape fifty years from now, but I would be approaching, you know, three digits 
not not sure what I'd be able to do with a lot of money at that at that stage of life other than leave it to my children. Now that sounds attractive, but how about we figure out a way to use that $10,000 in a diligent way where we are day trading. Okay? So, let me see if I have any other examples. Oh, you know about the 5% I mentioned when they said only 5% of the day traders are successful? They did define successful as um, you, if you're unsuccessful if you totally blow your account within one year. That's what they're saying. 95% of people who get into this blow the account within one year. Okay? And it says usually they fail because they make emotional decisions. They're either too busy to pay attention, they lack the education, they're too scattered, so there's no focus, they have no trading plan, meaning certain things that are pre-established rules you set for yourself that you don't go outside of to help you have some kind of balance. Um, and it helps with like to avoid impulsivity that is characteristic of people that like gamble and have gambling problems. People with gambling problems also can have problems in this area too. And so, thank you, thank you, Sari. So you wanna have that, that trading plan, basically. So it kinda helps you have some checks and balances. And then another reason people fail is no confidence. And the other reason people fail is because they're doing it alone. They may not have a trading buddy or anybody that they're collaborating with or they don't, they're not a part of an investment group that's like pooling their money together. All right, now the 5%, what makes them good at it? They're educated, they're skilled, they're action oriented, they have a success plan, they know how to prioritize their time, and they understand the power of capital or leverage. They value community. And so, you know, do you think that you could have what it takes to be successful with day trading? All right. Let's see. So they talked about trying to making sure you don't have unproductive assets. And what they mean by unproductive is um, it's either only giving you a single digit rate of return, so less than a 10% return, or negative returns on a yearly basis. That's considered unproductive. So they want to teach you three steps to turn unproductive assets into productive assets. And they talk about this patented core strategy that they've developed that's supposed to be so great. That's the gimmick, and that's the part that I really wasn't necessarily um, thrilled about. Okay, but they use a supply and demand strategy versus uh, the trend is your friend strategy. All right, now I know I'm way over my 20 minutes, but I'm gonna try to wrap it up, but I wanna make sure I hit the most important points here. So the three steps are probability, leverage, and risk reward. And these are things that they're saying they're gonna use in their classes when they're teaching you to make you successful. And they talked about leverage is making your money work for you. Um, you can start out with an account as small as $5,000 to generate $50,000 per year as passive income. Okay, and you have leveraged asset classes that you can use this. So the let's see, there were four different classes, and I don't know that I want to get into all the details, but let me just at least try to identify what they were. Um, one of them is options. So you have your options. You have your, your futures market. That's like trading commodities like wheat, soil, gold, 
let's see, you have your Forex trading, which is um, trading one country's currency for another country's currency. And that's actually um, a 24 hour a day, five day a week market. Whereas a lot of the other markets are more like a nine to five kind of thing. So you got Forex, futures, options, and there's one more. Let's see. Oh, stocks. Yeah. Okay, so there were four things. So, you know, I don't have the greatest understanding of what each of these things are, but by going to the seminar today, I'm going I know that I'm going to start researching each of these things so that I have a better understanding. And then I will consider maybe I'll take a class, maybe I won't. But one thing I real I didn't even realize until um, a couple of weeks ago is that I've had this book at home for years. This book was written in, uh, it was 19 years ago. And it's called How I Trade for a Living by Gary Smith. So it's old and you can tell it's kind of old because the way that he talks about having accessibility to the market, like watching your... Um, being able to get on the phone and make sure you look at the newspaper, you can tell that it was harder back then to be able to keep track of the market. But now with your cell phones, I mean, you can just anywhere you are at any time, you can look and see what's going on. But I started reading this book today. I only spent about an hour, so I'm not very far in, but I will continue reading this. And then I also found this book on my bookshelf which is called Using Candlestick Charting. This is also about 20 years old. I'm not sure if information becomes obsolete or if this is just fundamental stuff that is still relevant today. But either way, it won't be a waste because I'm gonna read it and I feel like having an understanding of things that happened in the past and how people used to do things is a good indicator about what the future could be. So even though these are older books, I'm going to read them. And I'm also going to invest in some newer books and see. I think another book that's around here was the um, the Warren um, uh, Buffett Way. And I don't know how you say his last name. So I'm, I'm not sure if it's Buffet, Buffet, whatever. But yeah, so, you know, I'm sitting around here with these books and didn't even know they were here for years and years. And uh, now I'm going to actually get on top of it. So I encourage you to do the same. I will be updating you all on my journey as I learn how to do day trading. Right now, I am looking to, I'm looking for ways to create, even if it's risky, I'm looking for some ways to create some real capital because I have projects I'm working on with the team and we want to be able to do the kind of things we want to do and not really rely on another investor. So if we're gonna need, you know, more than like 40 or $50,000, we, we need to figure out how to be able to generate some chunks of money and not just deplete, you know, like what we have. So I'm thinking that if I really look at this, maybe I don't know how quickly I can start getting with the program, but I know I start school soon, but I feel like I need to try to fit this in and, and work on this. And I'm going to actually have a meeting with my family and we're going to talk about um, who else is interested in learning because um, not to be funny or anything, but most of the people in my immediate family, because I don't know a lot of my extended family well, but most of the people in my immediate family are very intelligent people, very intelligent people. They have good minds for the math and sciences and analytical and critical thinking skills. So I'm going to be calling a family meeting and letting them know I feel like a lot of our time and attention should be devoted to using our mind to understand how to do this. And we also can pool our resources together and have like a little quasi hedge fund going on because if you... If you want to be viewed as an official day trader in the eyes of the Security Exchange Commission, I want to say the SEC is the one that sets this rule. I think you have to have uh, no less than twenty-five thousand dollars 
in, that you're working with in your account. And I think they're doing that for a reason. I don't know why. I know today they said it has different tax implications. But now I think I understand why investment groups get together and try to reach a certain goal or get to a certain point so that they can day trade because it, it has better tax implications when you're looked at as a day trader. If you're not a formal day trader, a lot of these apps that you use or these programs that you use, they set limits on how many day trades you can do within a certain period of time. So I think on like Robin Hood, I think I saw something like you can't do more than three day trades within a week or something like that. And if you do more than that, they'll suspend your account for like 90 days or something like that. So I want to find out more about why they have those rules, why they're doing it that way. But I think the $25,000 rule, to me, I feel like we live in a society where people in positions of power and who've had the money, I think they figured out ways to, to stay in power and to keep a lot of the money to themselves. And when they know there is a way that you can make good money, if you're just simply smart and willing and able, I think they try to make that, uh, I, they make it inaccessible to the average person. Because I don't know about you all, but I don't know many people that just have a spare $35,000 or $25,000, I'm sorry, $25,000 just sitting around ready to put into the stock market. You know, the average person doesn't even have $500 sitting around for my community. I mean, they may have something they can pull on from their 401k, but... Um, most people don't have that and so it makes me think hmm what if we do get what if we do get to that point and what if we are smart enough to make it work definitely something to consider anytime they have those kind of threshold requirements it makes me think it's designed to keep certain people out and i'm one of those people where you're not gonna keep me out mm -mm. I'm having a family meeting. Me and my family want to get together on this. I was talking to my dad today about it, and it's a good example of how most of the people in my community think about the stock market. They feel like it's a sham, like it's bogus, like you really can't make money from it. But I'm here to tell you, people are making money on the stock market when they learn how to do it. They're making the money. And the, the big people on Wall Street, they're never not really making money. And they're making a whole lot of money because of people like you all that are afraid of the stock market or thinks, you know, you have to pay somebody else to do it for you. They're capitalizing off of sheep. They know that there are a lot of sheep out here that will just kind of sway with whatever the herd is doing. That's just the direction they go in. And I really want to encourage people to get out of that sheep mentality and start to think more independently. I think that's really going to help. So I know I have used up more than enough time running my mouth here. Uh, just to give you an idea, that, that class today, the seminar, was free but they're going to try to get you to pay their application fee and enroll in some of their classes, the classes that you want. So they break it down. They have like different classes and you can decide the ones you're interested in. And so just the application fee alone, at first they said it was $500, but they said if, if you make your decision by Monday, it's only two ninety nine. When they said that, I was like, "Nope, I'm not. I'm not doing this," because it felt gimmicky. It really did. Although I thought the information they were given was accurate, but they really wanted your money because they they're a for profit place, so they want enrollment. And the the name of that place was the Online Trading Academy. They claim to be one of the largest um, educators on day trading. So you might want to look them up. It may be something good for you.
or you may want to look up another place that does the same thing but that's all I have for you this evening now the goal I want you all to um, select in select one of these programs acorn Robin Hood Ameritrade are the ones that I'm familiar with in learning but if you know of any other, that's fine. But what I want you to do is to research and decide on the one that you're going to actually download the app. You're going to create your account. And you're going to find out what the minimum requirement is of money you have to put in it. I think Ameritrade might have been like $50. Robinhood was like $35. Find out the information. Get the account set up. And prepare to put that minimum in there okay that's going to be your goal you don't have to have the money in there by tomorrow but i do want the account established i want the app on your phone the account created and then you're going to be ready to put that minimum in there within the next week or so that's the goal so let's do our q a we don't have very many people watching this evening um but I still want to open it up for Q&A if anyone has questions. And I'll also go back and say hello to everyone like I usually do. So we got Robin, Kendall, Greg, Dion, Stan, Mom and Derek, Lorenzo, Rio, these are a lot of new names. Carletta, Carlo, Terry's back. Um, Brian, Melvin, Gary, Tamara. Well, mom stopped through. Thank you. Pride, Joy D, my sister. Grace is back. She's a regular. Larry and Uncle Paul. And Michael, I've seen Michael in here quite a few times. So thank you for all of the returning people, even if you just stop in. You say, remember when I told you my friend was doing that? I thought it was a pyramid scheme. I can see why you thought that. Yeah, it's not. Um, he's doing the classes or he's doing the actual day trading. Because when you explain day trading... And you explain the classes, they both kind of sound like it makes you feel suspicious. Like, huh? Because you don't quite understand how it works. So it just, it does, I admit, it does sound that way, but it's not. It's not a pyramid scheme. It's actually a school. Yeah, the classes, nope. You, you are in control. You don't work for anyone. Um, no one you're not recruiting other people under you you know in fact a lot of times people like it to be a solo endeavor because they don't want it they don't want a trading buddy in this book i read one of the first things that he said is he's a lone wolf he doesn't believe he doesn't trust anybody else's judgment about stocks so he doesn't consult other people during the day and say hey man what do you think about this stock? You think I should sell? He says he doesn't even like to get his mind clouded with other people's opinions. He likes to keep a clear head. So it's not a pyramid scheme. That's kind of why like, I wanted to do this video tonight. Day trading. All it is is instead of you investing your money into a 401k and just expecting it to be a long-term retirement kind of thing that you don't touch, but you just keep adding money to it steadily. And it's slow growth. They're saying you can do that too, but you can also, every day, you can go in if you want, and you can buy and sell the same stock within the same day because that, during the the hours that the market is open which is like i want to say like around 9 to 4 30 or something it opens at like 9 it closes at 4 30 you wake up you make sure as soon as it opens you're looking and you're using the knowledge you've gained from the classes to decipher 
and um, distinguish between the ones you want to buy. You buy them and you watch the candlestick charts. Because the candlestick chart, that's why this book is good to look at because the candlestick charts will tell you like what it means. So you have candlestick charts where each candlestick can even be, it can represent one minute. One candlestick can represent one week. It can represent 10 minutes. It can represent 20 minutes. It can represent a month. So you get these, it basically teaches you what like all these things mean. So like if you get a candlestick that's green, it means that for that particular period of time, that asset, it, 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 it grew. It increased in value. If it's red, it decreased in value. And then you have like these little wick parts that shows like when the market opened, how much was it going for and how much was it going for when the market closed. And when you look at the candlesticks over the course of a chart, there are certain like line graphs and equations and things that people use to create like a line that shows them if it starts reaching a certain point, it's time to sell. So you might have bought this stock at nine in the morning and you see that now the price is going up, 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 right? Now it's like going down and you're like, wait, it's going down. Should I sell? But it might go back up even more. And if it spikes up, you might have got in, but it might have spiked up like 50% within a few hours. And once it gets up there, you're like, all right, I'm going to sell now. I'm going to get out now. And then you've gotten whatever you started with. If it was a 50% gain, you get that 50% gain on the money you put in. So, you know, if you if you put in $10 and you get a 50% gain, then you're going to have $15. I hope I did that math right and not make myself look like a fool. My sister is going to tear me apart. She can do math in her head. But I think, yeah. So imagine, so that would be, so if you put in $10 at 9 o'clock in the morning and by 3.15 p.m., it's up 50%. You go ahead and you sell. And now you have $15 in your account. You made a, you made a net profit of $5 that day. So that's $10, right? That's if you're working with ten dollars, you can you can actually do it. You can do that little bit of money, but imagine a person that had a million in there, and it went up fifty percent. Now you have one point five million dollars. You have half a million dollars. You made half a million dollars in one day. That's what Goldman Sachs are doing. That's what the people on Wall Street are doing with the hedge funds. They're pooling together a bunch of people's money and they're putting it in and they're day trading and they're making people millions of dollars. Goldman Sachs has made over a hundred million dollars in at least like nine days out of 365. They'll show you a breakdown of how much money they made, how many days they made a certain amount of money and how many days they lost money. And they never lose anything close to what they win. Basically, I say win like it's gambling, but what they what they gain. So day trading, it's not a gimmick. It's not a pyramid scheme. It is really just algorithms. It's strategy. It's paying attention to detail. If there's a degree of risk. And then you have to figure out how much am I willing to put in here? Somebody like myself, I wouldn't mind easily playing around with a a thousand dollars i would throw a thousand dollars in here and play around with it right and if i see that something goes up you know even 30 percent i might pull out just to get a 300 dollars. if i made 300 dollars that day that's more than what some people make in a whole week after taxes at their minimum wage so you darn right i'm about to learn how to do this because i don't think i'm going to lose all the time i'm going to i'm going to give it a shot so there is no gimmick and it it's so it makes me wonder why more people are not doing it but i i now know why it's why the same reason why more people are not bossing up it's the same reason why it's only four viewers right now looking at this free information that i'm giving that i've been giving steadily 
for the past 17 days officially. And prior to that, I went seven days straight. So I have already been on here 24 times giving out free information about how to start your own business. And a lot of people just are not interested. I have 31 subscribers to my YouTube channel. Okay, so it's no trick. You can make the money, but as with anything, you have to put the time and effort in and you have to get good with it. And most people just not really trying to put in the time and effort and they don't want to take risk with their money except in, in ways that are foolish, foolish risk. I would rather risk, if I'm going to be risking a lot of money, I would just rather risk it trying this. I would rather risk it trying this. So I really, really encourage you all to just start your research. Start your research. Develop your understanding of this. I think the reason why a lot of people stray away from it is simply because it looks like it's graphs and numbers. I have a friend at school, and she's in a doctoral program. But if you show her 2 plus 2, she panics. It's something in her and with how her brain works where she has like a fear of numbers and mathematics. She she can't do the simplest of things. And she, and she shared it with me because we're close and she was dead serious. And I was like, oh, wow. So I think there are a lot of people out there, just like if you can't read, you're not going to necessarily write a book, right? So if you're scared of math, you're not going to get into day trading. Even though the way they have programs and stuff now, it's not really like you're doing a lot of math. Not really. Okay? Truth. I know a lot of people who do not like to take risks with money. Yeah. And so you, you just came in to Sean. Hey, how you doing, girl? I was just saying earlier, people say they don't like taking risks with money, but every day they blow money and squander money. They may, they invest in things with no return on the investment other than pleasure. So when you out there, my example was buying that Louis Vuitton bag, you're investing in Louis Vuitton and the return you get is the pleasure you feel in your mind of buying a designer bag. That's, you're not, so you, you're not really getting a gain from it, but you're paying out that kind of money. And if you would have took that same money and put it into the stock market, and lose it, it, you know, I just think that it's really interesting that people can spend $5 a day on Starbucks coffee and go to happy hour. And I mean, people just spend a lot of money. Hey, thank you. Oh, really? I'm the first? You know, I'm glad to hear, I'm, I'm not glad to hear that I'm the first, but I'm glad to know that that you're here and you appreciate it. Please spread the word. I'm not charging anybody for this information. I just need people in my community to know that there are people out here day trading, making bank, making millions of dollars because they were able to figure out how to pull people's money together and take risk and say, you know, because if you're going to spend, let's say, $5,000 for you and your husband to go on a cruise, right? You might do that maybe once a year. Well, maybe let's say one year you decide y'all going to stay home and you're going to use that money and you're going to put it in the stock market. And that way, if you lose it, it's okay because you would have spent it anyway on the cruise or something else. If people change their thinking, then they don't have to think, oh, I'm I don't like taking risks. With the stock market but yet you up at dover or at mgm taking risk with your money you know what i mean so i think it's really just the way people have to change their mindset you know in my community i'm african-american and i heard some kind of statistic or figure where they're saying that the we only keep the black dollar in our own community for like eight minutes or something crazy right we we spend, we spend, other people invest. There's a difference. So I want to get more towards the investing end. Yes, that means my money is 
possibly going to disappear, but it's being invested. It's not being spent. And there's a difference. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Flipping rides. Cars. Like if you buy like if you buy a car and you try to like flip it, make a little profit, you take a risk because you might not be able to sell it or you may, it may need more work than you thought and now you've actually put more money into it. Is that what you're talking about? Kind of like flipping houses too. You cuz it's like there's no there's no reward without risk and that's one of the first things that that they started out saying in the seminar. And my friend Lee Sean, she was the one who guessed it because he was like, without risk, there's no what. And she guessed it, reward. And that was the correct answer. So you 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 have to be willing to take risk. But guess what? Everybody I know, they're a risk taker. People take risk and they don't even realize they're taking risk. When you, like let's say you are on an online dating app and you go and you have your first date with this person you met on an online dating app. That sounds like a risk. If you go to the restaurant and you buy some food and it comes out from the back and you don't know what they're doing to that food in the back or if they're clean or if they're crazy and spitting in your food, that's a risk. Walking out your front door, getting in your car, driving anywhere is a risk. Letting your children leave your sight and go to school in the care of other people is a risk. Laying down with a man and having sex unprotected is a risk. I mean, we taking risk all the time. So why not channel that risk? taking behavior into a way that can profit you instead of destroy you you know now remember if a way to do this thing where you if you never put money into it that you cannot afford to lose you're going to be fine you may get frustrated because you may go a long time before you make any money and you feel like you're losing a lot of money, but you just have to make sure that your household budget is intact. You don't use the rent money. You don't use the baby's milk money or diaper money. You don't use that money because when you start doing that, now you're going to possibly run into some problems. But there is a way that you can be responsible in how you do your day trading. And you can actually like Acorn... If you use Acorn, you can set it up where you give them access to every time you swipe your card or make a purchase, they have a roundup program. And it'll ask you permission to round up the purchase to the next, the nearest dollar. So if you buy a cup of coffee for $5.30, it's going to round that up to $6 and put $0.70 cent towards your account which is your buying power. And if you do that long enough, it's like it's forcing you to put money in that account to invest. There really is like pocket change. You know how like if you go to 7-Eleven, you pay for something in cash, they give you back like 30 cents and you just drop it in the little thing that they have, the people with the spare change thing or piggy bank. You know, you can use Acorn and before you know it, you have more spending power to like buy stocks. Keep in mind, there are stocks that are like 50 cent. So you can, you can play around with the penny stocks. You don't have to buy the stocks that are like $300. You don't have to go for Tesla, Facebook, Amazon. You don't have to go for those. You know, you can, you can play around with, with some small potatoes and see how you like it. Hey, Roxy. So, I mean, who thinks they might be interested in, in trying it? It's not like you're going to be signing up with me or under me or anything. It's not that kind of thing. This is completely independent. I'm just giving you the information for you to go and be able to day trade independently 
I'm just telling you to go educate yourself on it. I'm taking a risk getting my book published. I don't know if anyone will purchase one, but I'm putting my money into it. You're investing. And it is a risk. It is a risk. Without risk, it's, it's hard to get a reward. You gonna try, Derek? Good. Well, we gonna do this journey together. And those people, well, it depends. You just, you like if you do a Robin Hood account, their minimum they want you to put in is I think $35. And so you establish your account with Robin Hood. You link it to your bank account. You transfer $35 to establish your account. And now you have $35 to buy stock with and you can use that $35 and you don't have to put any more in there if you can do the minimum and you can play around with it don't play with it though establish the account put your minimum money in there but don't buy anything yet you have to educate yourself first by reading books or going to a class you may have to pay for the class if you're a person who does better in a classroom setting with someone feeding you information as you take notes and everything, do that. But if you're pretty good with like self-study, then you can look at YouTube, you can read books, you can practice and play. And they even have some accounts, I've been told, they have like mock accounts where you can, they have certain apps where it's like fake money and you're playing around with it as if it was real money to see like what would happen. So yeah, you and so so what I'm what I'm telling people tonight, Sashawn, is that a lot of people right now have money um, that they're letting stockbrokers or these financial institutions manage their money. Today, what I'm telling people is that you're giving away a lot of your money to those people, and you run the risk of losing money. Because those people do not have a fiduciary responsibility. I mean, they, they, it would seem like they do, but there is no law to really govern them to make sure they do trades or do things in your best interest. And so if you're with Goldman Sachs, if you're, you know, you want to basically be your own stockbroker. You want to learn the skills of how to day trade where you're looking at the market every day, buying and selling the same stock within the same day because you wanna to try to get a um, profit. You might, you might lose if you wake up at nine o'clock and you buy um, a stock and you see that it went down and it doesn't look like it's gonna start going back up, you may need to sell before you lose even more. Or you might say, I'm willing to lose. Let me just see what it does. And you let it go, 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 and go. And you decide not to sell. And you let the next day come. And maybe you sell the next day. But basically, it's like short-term buying and selling. It's not like the 401ks or the mutual funds or CDs or anything where you're like putting money into an account. And then you don't plan on touching it for like another 20 years 15 20 years like you're treating it like retirement that's fine but what they're saying is a lot of people are finding that that approach is not working for them and by the time they hit retirement age they're either right back where they started or very little growth or insufficient growth for them to be able to retire so you have to do something different and this, this place I went to today, they're saying try to have like five streams of income. And before they even said that, they didn't have to tell me that. I think I actually maybe have five streams of income. Child care, two assisted living homes, two B&Bs, a boarding home, working on a project, another project that's not generating money yet, but it's working on it. And then I'm about to do the stocks and then I'm getting my doctorate. I'm looking at about nine ways I'm trying to make that bread because if half of those ways don't work, maybe four will. I'm preparing myself.
for multiple streams of income. And so you can do that um, when you're trading stock. You don't have to have just one account. I have Ameritrade, Acorn, and Robinhood right now. Will I keep all of those? I don't know. Will I switch? I don't know. I'm way too ignorant on this subject to be able to like make those kind of recommendations. But what I do feel confident about the, the level of understanding I have is that this is making some people some money. And a lot of the people, I don't think, I rarely think that the people that are rich, when you hear their life story or you even see them talk in the interview, sometimes they're not really, they don't seem to be any more special than me. I mean, maybe I just think very highly of myself and yes, I do. But I feel like if there are people out there that have figured out how to make money with this, I think I could be one of those people and maybe you can too. We need to try it, but it takes time. You have to be willing to go and sit down in a seminar and sit there and take a class, and you have to be able to read books. I have so many books, it's not even funny. Like, I got books on books on books on books. My bookshelf, I probably have easily 100 books easy, and probably even more than that, and articles I have thousands and thousands of pages of articles that I've read. I've read more in the past three years than I've read my entire life. And it, and it has really been an eye-opener. So I encourage everybody to grab yourself a book. Yesterday I asked the questions, what's the last book you read? What's the last documentary you watched? What's the last class you took? What is the, when's the last time you intentionally took steps to acquire knowledge? Because if you're working with the same knowledge base that you've always had, you're probably going to do what you've always done. And most people that tune into this group are people who don't want to continue doing what they've always done. They're looking for more. They're looking for something different or better. Hey, Keon. So yes, we're going to keep we're going to keep on doing this boss up challenge. And every day, if I get more information that I feel I should share with you all regarding my progress with learning how to day trade, I will let you all know. I'm hoping like part of the theme, remember I'm doing the boss challenge with you all. I'm 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 a participant as well. So I'm hoping that I can actually be able to show you all some screenshots of my activity within you know maybe some weeks possibly i can start showing you something um good bad or ugly so that you can see and i can be held accountable to get busy with this because i like the way that my facebook friend i don't know him personally but i like the way that occasionally he will screenshot his account He'll block out his total balance, but he'll show you what he lost or what he gained that day trading penny stocks. Again, penny stocks are stocks that are valued at anything less than a dollar and fifty cent, I think, is the threshold for what what's considered a penny stock. So if you really want to be considered a day trader in, in the eyes of the SEC, you they want you to have an account with $25,000 in it. And a lot of people don't have that. But you don't have to you don't have to be a formal day trader. If you're not a formal day trader, there just may be limits on how many trades you can do within a certain amount of time. I'm going to like I said, I'm having a family meeting because I'm ready. I feel like we could be ready collectively as a family right now to be to establish an LLC or whatever the appropriate structure would be, business entity structure, and make that structure, if, if you can, I don't know if it can be a structure, I think it can be, which is why they have like hedge funds, but, and get that $25,000 status, day trader status. I'm ready. 
I'm just about ready for that. Um, after I play around for a while and talk to my family and get an understanding about, you know, who's interested and what do people have to spare. And also understanding that if we lose the money, nobody's coming after me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not going to steal from anybody. But if I make the wrong move or collectively we make a, the wrong move and we lose money, no, I'm not working with anybody who doesn't understand up front that we may lose money. I know my sister on board because I keep seeing her thumbs up in and heart and girl, we got to talk. <laughs> we need to. I feel like this it needs to be a shift in our attention to things that can generate more money quickly because we too smart to be working as hard as we work. We need to put these brains we've been blessed with to use. And then when that money rolls in, if we have some good days where we might make $8,000 in one day, now we're going to take that money and put it in the Snidget Project. You see what I'm saying? Because I really don't want to have to go after investors to help us with this Snidget Project. If we can help it. I'm really trying to, you know, that's how people get okie doke When they don't have the money, they, they're willing to sell out or, you know, take any little bit of something because they're so thirsty. They can't, they don't really wait for the magic to happen. They, they they fail too quickly or they take a, a little bit of something because they're they're too eager and they don't have the money remember we want to be the sharks we want to be the sh people the sharks on shark tank we don't want to be the participants coming to the sharks asking the sharks for money we want to be the sharks that are having people come to us asking us for money to help them invest to help them with their business and we have ownership in their business that's what i would like to see except i don't like the word shark because it has a negative connotation it sounds like it's predatory and i would hate to think that i ever develop into the kind of person that if i start getting more and more money that i would actually be you know greedy with small businesses or people who are trying to get a come up I, I, I want to believe that I will not become the person who would just try to get like 80% of somebody's company because they want $10,000 from me, you know. So I really think we need to position ourselves to be able to do that. And this show eventually can evolve where maybe, you know, my programming schedule will change. I won't be posting content every night. I'm just doing that now for the 30-day boss-up challenge. But I'm really going to start thinking about my program scheduling. And maybe one day of the week will be a Shark Tank-like show. But only be more centered around people that are, like, from my community. Or people, um, maybe they don't just live around me, but people who are in the same tax bracket you know who who we may be able to be of assistance to i'm really interested in doing that i really want to do it i can't figure out a name for it it'll come to me but i, I want to do a shark tank but only it'd be like an angel tank i don't know an angel cloud i don't know it needs to be something with more of a a positive connotation where it's like Yes, I want to make money off of your business if I invest in you, but I still want you to have a business and feel like you're you're getting the most from it. I think I'm capable of that. I don't think I would have given up my daycare center and reduced myself to 15% and let someone come in with no money down, get 85%, of a business I built over the past 13 years. So I think I'm capable of being fair, more than fair, and helping people get a start. For sure. So anyway, questions, 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 comments. I'm happy to answer any question that I know the answer to. Yeah, these are the materials I got from the uh, thing today. I still got my name badge on, actually. 
And shout out to LeSean for inviting me to that thing. Because I sure enough was not going to go. And she also has another opportunity that I'll tell you about. Um, it's $600 and it's in New York. And it's about branding and marketing. And uh, I'm, I have not decided if I'm going yet. I want to see more about the people who are... Um, providing the program and kind of see what their deal is because that could be very useful for one of the projects that we're working on but that's going to be i'll give you the details of that i'm sure she'll be tuning in one of these days and she can give the um details on that there was something else that i wanted to mention too oh i know what it is be right back let me get my phone i have to um there's some opportunity for internship leading to hire, leading to an all expense trip to Vegas to go to a licensing expo and see how we're going to try to get large companies to buy the rights to use our ideas and in in, in, in some things that we've created and have a patent for. Um, if, if there are any young people out there, you don't even have to be young, but usually the younger people have a little more flexibility with, you know, being able to be an intern and do like an apprenticeship. The experience that you will gain will be invaluable. So let me tell you the positions that we're looking for. And what we're going to do is when we get this group of people, we're going to figure out a way to um, evaluate performance and have a contest. And whoever has the highest evaluation will be able to accompany the company to um, Las Vegas for the Licensing Expo, which is um, June 3rd to June 5th, I want to say. So let's see here. And I'll also post this in the group. We're looking for a production assistant, a videographer, voiceover artist, media designers, script writers, character actors, administrative people, marketing, branding, and advertisers, set designers, like a, like a movie set, set designers, and artists and illustrators. Ten type of people we're looking for if you know anybody who is looking for a potential come up, no guarantee, but we think we have an idea that may pop. It's very original, has not been done before. It is patented. And um, I, whoever comes in at the ground level, they must be serious because if we give them credits, it could, if their name is associated with it, there is a potential that it could pop for them. I won't make any promises because I don't, I don't like to make false promises, but we feel very, very hopeful about it. But what we're trying to do is find talent. And it's been really hard, believe it or not, to find people that are creative and talented and actually eager about anything I don't know what's happening to the people and their motivation, but where are the people who are, I know there have to be some people out there. Where are the people that are interested in like getting on board with something that could be great? Having faith, your only investment is your time. You're not being asked for money or anything. And you get to work under people who are, entrepreneurs tons of expertise and experience and i don't know any other way to say it so if you have 
we're even accepting people if they're in high school they must be like at least a senior and very mature um but if they have like some kind of gift or if, if they're if they're talented and you're a parent and you would like them to be a part of it of course we would do business with the parent make sure that's squared away and then the child can be a part of it but you know we're going to be doing things like doing a music video there's going to be a youtube series and it's it's a stem television series for children using um puppets and also life-size characters um tons of ideas and things that we have and the idea has been in development for nearly 15 years or so and um now it's time it's definitely time to launch so if you know anybody high school college or even an adult who wants to be a part of it if you want to come on as an investor we'll consider that but i'm very leery about bringing people on and accepting money we more so need talent and manpower and creative energy around us um that's what we need so if you know anybody please have them inbox me or they can email i'll put the email at the end of the um when i when i go off live but it's going to be um snidgets at creative group.com i believe i'll make sure i put the right one in there and you can also visit our page at snidgets amazing techno bugs we're just getting the channel up and going working on some on google ads um, and getting, we have like a, 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 a trailer that we put out, like a demo trailer. And we actually are working on uh, the first episode. We've already shot all of the footage. And now the editing process is going on now. So we need to have at least three episodes ready. And a couple of other things developed, like the music video and the dance has been created for the children. All that needs to be ready to rock and roll for this expo in June. Anybody wants to be a part of it, please let me know. We will um, establish a time to meet up with you. We usually have our um, meetings on Sundays because that happens to be a day where the people who are part of the group are available, but we're flexible if, if people are not able to meet on a Sunday. But we're, we're talking about immediately and those that come on board and they show their skill or potential and it's really good then it becomes a paid position but only after they've demonstrated they have the skills or the skills are suitable enough and we see that there's a lot of potential for more development we will help grow and develop the person and then they will their names will be in the credits for this show so please please contact me we're definitely looking for people hi go go i've never seen go go in here before all right i'm down to five viewers does anyone have any questions about the positions that we're looking for or any other questions from previous videos about the boss up challenge anything get a group of people that are willing to pay a thousand dollars a year to invest on the market we might be able to but look Derek I could barely get people to hit the subscribe button which all it takes is your thumb and it's free and I can barely get people to do that so, I mean, I do understand it takes a while to build your following, but if I can barely get people to do that, I'm not, I don't really want people to think that I'm trying to recruit them to ask them for money for anything gimmicky. Like, that's not what it is, but people, I don't, I don't really think people want to get on board. 
if people wanted to get on board, more people would be viewing right now. I have gone and looked at what people are live streaming. I've been like just going in, checking out what people are talking about. And I've seen people have like 30, 50, over 100 people viewing at one time. And they are talking about nothing but foolishness. And I really resent that. Not that someone else is being successful in something that they're doing, but I resent that the positive messages, the things that our community needs to hear, the shift in thinking that needs to happen when people are talking about that, that's not popular. You know, popular is ignorant. Popular is, I don't know, I resent it. I feel like, how can we find people willing to pay a thousand dollars to invest and possibly lose their money when we can't even get people to subscribe to the channel or to tune in? Not even every night, but I do see regulars, but the only person that I see every single night, except maybe two nights, is Derek. If I left anybody out, I apologize. I have seen more people recently doubling back, tripling back. But from my day one people, the only person I've seen who was actually committed to this challenge has been Derek. From day one. And so that's really not a lot of people when you're talking about somebody giving away good information for free. People charge for what I'm doing they charge for consultant work and a lot of a lot of business owners don't want to share their trade secrets with you they don't want to share their marketing strategies they don't want to tell you how much money they're making or how they're being creative and what they're doing and I'm just giving it all away for free and can't even get people to hit a subscribe button it's disgusting to me but that's okay because this is documentation. I have like footage, live footage. If I pop the way I know I can, I'm not going to feel any shame. That people better not be talking about, oh, she needs to help the community. She needs to give back. Nah. No. Because this right here, this process that we're going through and that I want people to go through with me, this is what it takes to get there. So if people are not doing it with me and I get there, I'm just saying, I'm trying to show people the process and go right along with them. But people really not trying to do that. But you let me know. I already did what I already do. What I already do. <laughs> oh, help the community. Well, I know that in my heart, but you know how folks are. It's never enough. And, you know, there are a lot of people right now that think I'm in a great position and would love to be in my position. And it is a, it is a fair position that I'm in. I won't lie, but I also know I could be doing, uh, I can be doing it bigger I could be doing it bigger. I can be doing it better if I get focused and I get if I if I if I get focused on the right things, I can get to a different level. And I would love for people to go with me. But everybody can't go where I'm trying to go. I do understand that. But here it is right here. Here's my proof. You know, if YouTube still exists, 
If I ever make it to be a multimillionaire or billionaire, I want people to see these videos and be like, man, I wish I had jumped on board with that. That's how I feel about it. So you let me know if you know anybody that would be interested in joining an investment group. If you know of anybody, tell them to start tuning in. And once we see who's who in the group, then we're going to break it down into smaller groups. Because even within the group, you can have subgroups and separate chats. And we can start, that's when people will start seeing my face in person. That's when people will start getting my time. And like I'm so special, I don't mean to say it like that, but... That is when I will actually be sitting in the rooms with people, spending my time with people and bringing them really into my circle and making them a part of the process. But I have to first see who's serious, who's showing up, you know, who who wants to really do this thing. So I'm hoping that this this group will bring people out, bring out people who listen and it ignites something in them and they keep coming back and then they decide you know because even if you don't live local if i establish a relationship with you you have something to offer i will fly you here i will pay my team we will pay for your lodging hey we have b and b's we will bring you here and we will make you a part of the team for the amount of time that we need to work with you and then you can go back or do whatever you want to do but we have to meet the people first have to meet them they have to show up first and i don't really know if people are taking me seriously i don't know i guess maybe because maybe because they don't know me or maybe because they do know me i don't know which it might be but i'm serious the same way when I was 25 years old and I stood in a room full of people and told them what I wanted to do with Progeny Enterprises. And it didn't turn out exactly how I wanted, but it did become a million dollar corporation. And people, I'm sure people were sitting in that room thinking that I was crazy at the age of 25. Well, here I am again, trying to round up some people to tell them about ideas that I have and ways of making money and I'm trying to bring people in at the ground level and let's see what kind of let's see what kind of response I get. Let's see. So like the video, share the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, join the group on Facebook. Let's grow. I do see growth Two people subscribed since last night. One of them is somebody I went to middle school with, and I, I felt so honored. I actually, when I get the little email notifications of somebody subscribed, you would think I would have, like, hit the lottery or something. Each one. Hi, Crystal. So, yeah. Derek called it. It's three people watching. I need you guys to boss up. Tune in tomorrow, 9 o'clock. I'll try to announce in advance what the topic is so people can have an idea if they're interested in tuning in. But please come back. All right? You all have a good night.